In this video, we will be tasting and talking about spring 2022 harvest of our three different high mountain oolong teas. We're here today tasting spring 2022 batches of our three different high mountain oolong teas. Uh, the names of these teas represent the regions uh, that they grow in, uh, namely Ali Shan High Mountain Oolong Tea, Shan Lin Shi High Mountain Oolong Tea, and Li Shan High Mountain Oolong Tea. Ali Shan is the southernmost high mountain tea growing region in Jai County, uh, I think exclusively in Jai. Uh, it's also the largest. It includes several townships um, and has spread out more than the other areas. Shanlin Shi is uh, a little bit to the north, uh, not very far as the crow flies. Taiwan is a rather small island, um, but significantly different climate conditions, and we'll get into that in a bit. So Shanlin Shi is the second largest high mountain oolong tea growing region. And then uh, last but not least, Li Shan is the uh, furthest north of these three. There are other smaller regions a little bit north of that. But Li Shan is the highest and definitely the most prestigious uh, region of producing high mountain tea. So Ali Shan, Shan Lin Shi and Li Shan. Um, we haven't done this yet. Uh, we've been looking forward to tasting these side by side. Um, and now we're doing it. So I brewed nine grams of tea leaves uh, in 150 milliliter tea brewing cups. The first brew was one minute, 10 seconds. The second brew is 50 seconds and the third brew is one minute. With these cups, I feel like it takes a little longer for the leaves to open up. So uh, that's why I push it a little longer on the first brew and then bring it down significantly on the second. Okay, um, but let, I wanna just taste it because I can't wait any longer. Let's do the smelling of the leaves in the cups. It's cooled down almost to room temperature. You've got a little warmth in there. Floral over vegetal is the most fundamental character. Really nice, delicate, sweet floral notes in there. And then this deeper green uh, kind of quality uh, underneath the high notes. That's Ali Shan, the first one. Second one, Shan Lin Shi. Yeah, significantly different, more herbal and foresty. Kind of a deeper green, definitely fragrant, aromatic, but uh, more of a fresh garden, herbal, and maybe cedar forest. I often think of that, it could be a subconscious thing. Shan Lin Shi, the Chinese name means cedar forest river. So, but I swear every time I drink tea from this region, um, I'm reminded of pine forests. Okay, and Li Shan, third one. Mm. Um, the most subtle of the three, but there's just something rich about the aromatic profile of this tea. I would say floral also. Sweet. A little bit of creaminess in there. Just a nice balanced, sweet, um, maybe pastry. Very pleasant, delicate greens, um, sweet floral. Hmm. So Ali Shan, the southernmost high mountain tea growing region, uh, it, the Tropic of Cancer runs right through it. It has a significantly different climate um, than the, its uh, further cousins further north, so to speak. Um, it gets more sun. It's lower elevation also. So the character of the tea produced there typically is just 
sunnier in character, if I may. <laughs> it's uh, it's friendlier. It's more accessible for people that aren't, uh, you know, serious uh, high mountain tea drinkers. It's easy to appreciate. It's got sweet and floral notes, and it's balanced and bright. That's the kind of most basic way of describing Ali Shan. Shan Lin Shi is, uh, I often find it to have a deep foresty uh, flavor profile. Something, and what does a forest taste like? You know, it's like, it just reminds you, it takes you there in your brain. So um, this batch is uh, significantly more oxidized than the Ali Shan. It's thick, it's an amazing mouthfeel on the Shan Lin Shi. Um, vegetal, um, the notes, the aromatic notes are, I would say, herbal and foresty. So thicker, uh, richer, uh, more um, herbal than, and less floral than the Ali Shan. And looking at the visual brood, uh, looking at the color and um, sort of transparency and brightness of the brewed teas. Ali Shan appears to be the least oxidized. It's the lightest kind of limpid golden color. Shan Lichi is definitely the most oxidized with a deep golden color, but still bright. It's got a really nice kind of glow to it. And then the Shan is kind of in the middle between those two. It's got the first, the first brew is very light, but it came through on the second brew. Uh, just a sh uh, shade darker than the Ali Shan, uh, a richer golden color. This is a little greener gold or a yellowish green, the Ali Shan. So light, heaviest oxidized, and then medium for the Li Shan. Did I even taste the first one? Oh, well, same taste. Mm. Just like it smelled, it's very soothing and creamy. Very clean, the Li Shan. And there, the nose to it is a different level. It's both delicate and substantial. I just can't stop like exhaling through my nose to get that hit. It's really nice. It's not a um, super, well, that's the first brew, that's lighter. It's not um, a bold overall composition. Very pure and um, sweet notes. I could conjure up floral, but it's very light floral if it's floral. It's kind of more like a meadow, you know, like maybe you're getting wildflowers, maybe it's the grasses. Um, definitely fresh, but not so perfuming. Mm. Very nice, really, really clean finish. Leaves a nice refreshing sensation on your palate. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Ali Shan for the third. Mm. It, this is verging on dangerous, just like continuing to sip three different, like serious high mountain teas repeatedly. Yeah, the, the Shan Lin Chi is definitely the thickest and most substantial of the three. A uh, little less in the nose, um, a more flavor packed than a, uh, a aromatic packed profile. Got some buttery pastry in there too. Clean. Okay, I'm gonna go right in the middle one more time. Very nice, refreshing, bright. Nice balance to the Ali Shan. Deeper green. Uh, yeah, like pretty substantial dark green leafy character to it. Mm, 
there's buttery. If you do that sip thing, you get a little more of a creamy, aromatic thing. Mm, yum. Okay, so before I move on to looking at the tea leaves and talking about those, in terms of a quick summary of the flavor profiles, um, I would say Alishan is bright, floral, refreshing, um, just a nice, uh, delicate but substantial spring tea. I would say it's the most spring in its character of these three. Shanlin Shi is the most uh, substantial uh, brew, the thickest mouthfeel, very balanced. There's really almost no astringency on any of these, but this one is particularly thick and creamy uh, with deep green notes and a little bit of pastry there too. Um, the, the, the finish is, is something like creamed spinach or uh, like a... Uh, what are those Greek pastries that are filled, the flaky things that are filled with uh, feta cheese and spinach, something like that. Of course, not savory to that extent. So very substantial profile on the Shan and Shi. And then I would say the Li Shan is the most sophisticated. Not surprisingly, that's what it's famous for. A very pure, very delicate, um, yet substantial, highest elevation produce. Uh, it got its name to fame for that kind of quality. We're happy to have our um, source because they don't make it as green as the standard uh, the Yishan High Mountain Tea. That region, um, what you find most uh, is a very minimally ized, uh, excuse me, I'm trying to say minimally and oxidized at the same time. What you find up there is a very minimally oxidized uh, form of tea making, which preserves all the high notes, but it's very green. And uh, you have to uh, be into that super green, like close to green tea kind of character, even though these leaves are much bigger and have a different um, character to them than most green teas. It has that uh, very fresh green character. Our uh, tea makers that we source from are professional competition tea producers. They're skilled at oxidation in a way that most of the people up in Lishan aren't. That's just a fact. And um, they bring it, they, well, their, their customer base basically knows uh, why they're doing that. It just offers a more balanced, uh, smoother uh, mouthfeel and more substantial flavor. And it also holds its uh, flavor profile better than a, a very green tea. So it's still the Ishan is still within that kind of um, spectrum, but more oxidized than most Lishan that you will find. Okay, we got a bed of leaves here. Surprisingly enough, the Alishan stems are uh, particularly thick. Even though the leaves, um, it's okay. The first thing that comes to mind in a response to that observation is that the spring growing season was particularly long this year. It didn't get warm, basically, and it had enough rainfall, but it, it kind of like winter held out for uh, a long time, and harvests were significantly delayed, like by a week or maybe up to three weeks, even in some cases. So, um, yeah, I can feel that the Alishan leaf is more... It's thicker and more substantial. It has a little bit more age to it. The Shanlin Chi, I, ha I happen to know. I was at uh, the factory um, a few times during this harvest and up on the mountain when they were picking. And they picked young. So this is uh, uh, on the young side uh, of the standard, which um, if you don't want a, a very oxidized tea, these guys are also competition tea makers, so they professionally make tea for people that are going to roast it. It needs a significant level of oxidation. Uh, our friend who manages this farm and his friend processes the leaves requests that his, uh, his share of the harvest be made more in the style of high mountain tea, meaning minimally oxidized. So even though uh, that request is heard, it still comes out more oxidized than most high mountain tea that you find. We like that. 
we think that, well, we've said before that overall, over our 20 years of experience, and if we had to choose one high mountain tea out of any, we would probably, well, not probably, we would choose Shan Lin Shi. Li Shan, um, we also know that these leaves were, there was a few days of rain, at least, like maybe they had to rest for four days. And that in the springtime is significant. The leaves continue to grow. And basically you wanna, when the leaves are new, but fully grown, they're pointing up and the, the, the surface of the leaf, right, where the stem is in the middle, is actually still in the V shape. And they say, and the term is, uh, it's not opened yet or it has opened. And as soon as that leaf fully goes flat, it's reached its fully mature stage and it's, um, the constituents change a bit. It's um, less ideal than uh, when it's a little bit young still. I saw photos of these leaves when they're still on the trees. They high make high or they hadn't opened yet. So um, I think it's a mature stock, but not overly mature. And these stems are not as thick as the Alishan, which is very unusual. So there you have it. I mean, the visuals, when you actually look at the coloration, I can't really see much difference among them. I can only see that the Alishan leaves are significantly bigger than the Shanlin Shi leaves and kind of in accordance with the flavor profiles, the Li Shan stock is kind of in between those two. So there we have it. Happy uh, and getting quite lifted from all that tea that I just tasted. I'm going to continue tasting this all through the afternoon. Um, we encourage uh, people that are into high mountain teas to do what I just did. Do cuppings of teas side by side or at least get to taste um, the teas from each area uh, from the same season. And um, if possible, if you have the opportunity, source from each season as well. So not just the first flush, but the second and third and maybe the fourth flush if it's four seasons of harvest. We are doing our best to offer at least one middle harvest in between spring and winter uh, to allow our fans to experience the differences between the harvest from the same source and the same tea makers. It's really quite fun to do that. I'll do one more sweep here. Floral, vegetal, much more substantial. Get my nose in here. Mmm. Herbal, creamy. That kind of Greek pastry comes to mind again. Mmm. This has the most, uh, well, the most substance in the aromatic profile. I can see the oils uh, sticking to the bottom of the cup. Yeah, there's something, like I said before, kind of on a different level with the character of the Lishan, as it should be. I mean, it's significantly more expensive. It's uh, significantly higher up. Just for reference, uh, Ali Shan, our farm is at 1,200 meters. Shan Lin Shi, our farm is at 1,500 meters. And Li Shan is at 2,000 meters. So significant differences. But not only the elevation, it's a lot has to do with the actual positioning, literal positioning, uh, geographic positioning of the valleys, which way they're facing and the winds. We're an island here, and I I'm, I'm continue to be uh, impressed and learn year to year that wind patterns change, uh, well, I mean, from, re from area to area on a relatively small island, the weather patterns really uh, vary quite a bit. Shan, uh, one more time, Ali Shan High Mountain Oolong Tea, Shan Lin Shi High Mountain Oolong Tea, and Li Shan High Mountain Oolong Tea from Spring 2022 Harvests. Thanks.